All right, folks, so Lying has stepped away for a few minutes, and uh, so we're going to keep working on some things without him. So, uh, one of the most interesting things I want to show you was this Invar factory. Now, basically, this is a crafting pipe that says that if you put the, the parts for Invar in here, this chest, it will make Invar for you. Now, because there's multiple steps involved with Invar, and I didn't want to have to automate each individual piece, what I actually did was used item ducts here to control it. So if we take a look at this one, it basically blacklists Invar. It says it won't suck Invar out, but everything else will be sucked out. It basically then just puts into a pulverizer and then into the cyclic assembler, which knows how to take pulverized ferrous metal and pulverized iron and then put that into a redstone furnace, which then ejects back into the chest. So it's pretty simple. You put, so you put two iron bars and one ferrous metal bar in here. It, it automatically extracts those, grinds them all up, mixes them with the cyclic assembler, then it spits them out through after being actually processed, and then puts them back in the chest. Now, this item duct won't extract Invar because we blacklisted Invar, and then the crafting logistics pipe sees, oh, look, the Invar's here, so that's done. Now, because we have an Invar factory, I've taken the time to go ahead and replace all of these with the superior Invar conduit. Um, I've also made another hardened energy cell, which we'll be using in just a sec. Now, if you check out down here, you'll also notice that this is no longer leadstone, this main trunk line. And this actually leads all the way over here, past a bunch of machines, and up into this new room. What we're going to do next is assemble a little bit more awesomeness for thermal expansion. Specifically, we need to be able to make hardened glass, we need to be able to make a variety of fluids, and we need to be able to make a bunch of redstone uh, meltdown machines so that we can make the various things that we want. Let's kick this off, though, by kicking it up a notch with our wrench. So you can see here I was working on making that hard energy cell, which we'll grab, but we need a wrench. No longer are we going to be using the um, other thing. We're going to be using a completely different thing. Specifically, we're going to be using a battle wrench. So if we take a look at our wrenches, we can see that there's a whole bunch of different wrenches. We're going to start by looking this, and we're actually going to work our way up to a flux-infused battle wrench. But uh, for that, we just need one of these gears and an Invar battle wrench. This will be our new wrench, which is, you know, it's not nearly as good a weapon as we have, but uh, let's go ahead and toss it in the enchanting table anyways. Now we're going to pull this out and use our Aurum-based one, just so as not to stress our blood network. Oh gosh, what do we want to have on this? Um... Hmm. Well, I think we want capitalists so we can get extra experience from this. And uh, this is not really a weapon that we're going to be using to kill enemies. It's more about, well, I don't know. Maybe it is. Let's go ahead and toss this in. Let's level this up a little bit. We'll get extra experience and extra killing potential. And, um, well, you know, why not? We'll add the fire aspect and the knockback, too. This should be fun. And uh, it looks like we will need to use two wands, but that's fine. And of course, we can just fill this up a little bit at the end. And there we go. We have our enchanted Invar Battle Wrench. Ideal. Um, so, good stuff. Good stuff for sure. Now, let's see about uh, what we're going to do over here. Let's First, let me grab this awesome wrench, and let's just go ahead and pop, take that off. Uh, what we would like to do is bring this over here. This is going to be our new thermal expansion room. So we're going to go ahead and put this in the wall here. And then we're going to turn on output there, input everywhere else. It should be good. And we'll um, start to run things around the back here. Now, the goal of this is that we're going to go ahead and make some magma crucibles, tanks, and uh, other things. Now, these things aren't too expensive, so we go magma. And we take a look at the Magma Crucible. The main thing that's difficult about these is they actually need the Leadstone Energy cell frames, um, and they need, you know, the uh, the metal, but they're not too bad. And what those will do, um, those and the, uh, well, basically what we want to do is make transposers then. These fluid transposers will take the stuff that we get from the crucibles and which melt things down and put them in like basically infuse them so if we take a look at for example if we want to make um what's a good example blizz powder perhaps uh blizz powder this is made not just by breaking blizz rods but also by infusing a well not the pulverizer a fluid transporter putting redstone into a snowball so this is destabilized redstone and we can make this in the magma crucible just by tossing in redstone so really what we want to do is set up a system to go ahead and just feed in a ton of these things in um, so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly off camera i'm going to dig a little bit here and i'm going to sort of make some area here for machines. So let me go ahead and craft the machines that we're gonna need and lay some cable in back here. 
and we will uh, be right back with what we need for the next part. All right, so I have taught the system how to make all these things. So for example, now I can just say magma crucible, give me three of these. Um, let's see, how about uh, fluid transposer, give me three of those. And you know, why not uh, an induction smelter, give me two of these. So those will all be cooking up. It'll take a minute or two. While we're at it, um, I went and managed to grind up some ethereal essence, uh, which is quite a bit harder than the ethereal, the orum jar. Uh, but that will be worth it so that we can give this node here bright. So we have an ethereal essence. We want to add bright. Uh, so we have plenty of orum and we have the ethereal essence. Let's go ahead and start. And you'll see this will actually take quite a while. But this is um, this is cool. This is going to be a node to jar that's guaranteed to be bright, which is fantastic. It's not going to be dim. It's going to be bright, which means it'll recharge super fast. Um, and this is going to drain at a pretty quick rate. Uh, hopefully that will be sufficient for what we want to do. We'll leave that running for a while because it's not very exciting to watch, to be honest. Um, and let's go back over here. You can see I've set things up a little bit. And what's what I'd like to do now that we have the uh, fluid transposers and induction smelters, and uh, we should have the magma crucibles coming up any minute. Those are just the most expensive parts of it, um, is we need to go ahead and um, basically set it up. So we're gonna have supplier pipes back behind here. They're gonna go in for each thing and set up kind of a line for us. Um, so let's go ahead and just clear out a little bit more space here. No big deal. Pretty easy to do. And we should be good on this front. We'll just leave enough room for us to run piping behind. And let's go ahead and put the fluid. So the first one is going to be, um, I think, yeah, so this will be perfect for that. And then we'll have the uh, magma crucible here. Although it seems maybe, maybe I messed up a recipe and it's not coming out. Interesting. Um, did I not request it? Uh, looks like I actually didn't request it. Well, that would that would explain why I don't have it, huh? <laughs> uh, magma crucible. Let's get three of these. Oh, we're missing six copper. Oh, I didn't retrain it. This is the other big problem with this system is it just doesn't have any notion of fuzziness. So I'm going to have to go through. Let's see, where is it? Uh, this is the fluid transposer. Yeah, I did. I neglected to retrain it. So there we go. No problem. And now if I request them. It will be a simple matter. Uh, or not. Interesting. Did it not? Oh, I have to import it too. I'm kind of looking forward, to be honest, to switching out uh, for the other thing, because just I do so much logistics pipe work, and I kind of don't know if I'm really getting my money's worth out of it. I mean, it's cool. It's fun. But anyways, um, I might just keep the remote orderer system around and leave it like that. Uh, yeah, so we'll request three of these. That'll come up in a sec. Um, in the meantime, let's also grab some tanks. So we'd like to have an intermediate storage. Um, if we're going to have three things, then we want six of these. So that should be sufficient. We could use portable tanks, but these are a little bit better. Uh, and we don't have any hardened glass yet. While we're at it, let's on this side go ahead and uh, clear a little bit more room. And here's where we'll make our hardened glass. We're just going to set up an induction smelter for now. It's not going to be... Uh, a huge deal, but we'll set up another one that's automated in just a second. I'll show you how we do that because I'm going to do that a little bit differently. So let's go ahead and um, now we'll give this one a little bit more room because the other one will be. Oh, come on. I feel like it's not listening to my clicks. Boop. Let's go ahead and put one here and that'll be for manual use. And then we'll put one over here, which will automate the use of for the other stuff. In the meantime, we can just go ahead and drop some Invar conduits back here and uh, run these pretty straightforwardly. And uh, I believe we have a pulverizer on hand. Uh, we don't, but we can cook one up pretty rapidly. And we'll get one of those up soon so that we can pulverize things straight in there. Um, we do need, like for example, a fair supply of sand to make this work. But we want hardened glass for opaque item or uh, clear item ducts. Now we should have three magma crucibles and six tanks. So let's go ahead and uh, put one two tanks. Now, I think that this will work. It's going to be a little bit awkward, um, unfortunately, but uh, still, you know, beggars can't be choosers at this stage of the game. Um, and then we'll put over here another one of these. Magma Crucible, two tanks, and then a fluid transposer. And, um, hmm. I thought we had enough room, but we don't. <laughs> it looks kind of dirty. 
Uh, but that's fine. We'll just, for this one, we'll go ahead and uh, put it right there. So, fluid transposer, or a magma crucible. Two tanks. Fluid transposer. It's a little unfortunate, but, uh, you know, it's fine, I think. It's fine. Uh, it's a little messy, but sometimes, you know, you go through, you do stuff, and you realize, oh, I didn't count it out just right because I didn't have the build in my head entirely. And let's go ahead and get the power run for these really fast. All right, so we've got some wiring up, and we've also got uh, some hardened glass starting to cook up right here, which we'll need in a little bit. So I think that this is the right recipe, isn't it, like this? Um, isn't it lead and hardened glass? It's lead ingots and obsidian dust, right? Uh, I guess this just isn't, um, oh, it's not wired up. Well, that would help if I actually connected everything to the battery, right? <laughs> let's go like that, like that, all right. And let's make sure the output is on in the back. It is now. So that should start charging up. And that should start charging up slowly. So everything here is going to start charging up quite slowly, but should be sufficient for our purposes. Um, we can also see that these are going to start charging up, which is good because what we're going to ask it to do is turn this one into our redstone meltdown factory. And then we're going to ask it to eject to the right uh, and not input, input from the bottom, I think, for now. Um, similarly, we're going to have this one input from the top and probably eject to the down. Uh, with the orange. Yeah, I think that's about right. And this won't output at all. But... Right, so now this is gonna start running and basically just turning that. Now, similarly, we're gonna have one for, whoop, not what we wanted to do. Uh, there we go. Um, we got some glowstone here, which is also gonna be very useful for a bunch of stuff. So we're gonna toss this in as well. And we're gonna have this eject to the right. And uh, we'll, don't worry, we'll go through and we'll have the input from the down. We'll go through and clean this all up in just a minute. But I just wanted to get you started and sort of see the principle of what we're doing here. Um, clearly, this is probably we're having too much power draw from one system. So we're gonna just have to kind of keep going here. Uh, we want this to output to the right. And we want um, this to, well, if we go over here, that should allow stuff to come in, right? Yeah, there we go. Um, and uh, hopefully we'll be able to keep this usable. So I think we're going to actually do... It's slowly going down, but it should be sufficient over time. I think we'll be fine. I think we'll be fine for now for what we want to do. Uh, and of course, this last one, the most impressive one, I think, is that we're going to be tossing in ender pearls and melting these down as well. Now, this takes a lot of energy. So we're probably going to have to come over here and, you know, do better energy piping. But that's fine, because now we have actually can start making really high quality ender energy conduits and even energy frames. Now, um, this system is not going to be suitable for necessarily, this is more for like handwork for now. We'll make copies of this system elsewhere. Now, the real trick, of course, is that if we just put an input over here, it's not like it's going to magically fill up, right? There need, there's no output from these tanks. So what we're going to do is make a bunch of servos and a bunch of uh, fluid ducts. So if we go servo, pneumatic servo, I should say. Uh, I think we have to pneumatic. Um, I'm surprised we don't know how to craft this, but we're just going to go ahead and make a stack because we'll need them. And then we want to go ahead and also make some fluid ducts as soon as this is done. And uh, this hardened glass we've been cooking up, of which we now have a stack, will come in handy right about here. Because what we'd like to do is go ahead and make some opaque or uh, transparent fluid ducts. Which uh, is pretty easy, what we got here. So we got hardened glass, or fused quartz in this case. We'll use hardened glass though. And let's just go ahead and make 24 of those. And we'll be able to easily, oh wait, let me grab these uh some of these pneumatic servos i sort of ran out of glass halfway through so not the best um and we'll be able to pretty much do how we want now the only thing that's not so great about this is that what i envisioned doing originally was going like this the problem is if we don't fill up the tanks all the way well then we can't actually do that which is not that awesome but you know what we have infinite everything and this is almost as much for the the beauty of the build is anything else. So I'm kind of fine with that. We're actually gonna fill it up in just a sec, you'll see. Um, so what we had to do is install servos on each of these. And then we basically say, 
um, ignore redstone always and just suck things out. Um, and that should allow us to basically just completely pull out from these permanently. Um, so yeah, we basically get the control status of ignored and there's no blacklist uh, because there's only one fluid that can possibly ever touch it. And um, yeah, so now we, what we want to do is get that filled out. Now, in order for this to keep going and to work, what we need to do actually is get an infinite supply of these things down here. So now to do this, we're going to have to actually tap into our existing logistics system and set up some supplier pipes. That's why we've got the inputs on the bottom over here and we've got the outputs as well. I'll show you what we mean in just a sec. So check this out. I just got to order a bunch of gold pipe, which may take a little while because um, we're out of glass. So give me just a moment to get that all set up because I'm going to have to make sure that we have enough glass. I know we got a bunch coming in over here, but unfortunately glass cooks up pretty slow in my system.